I've been doing some computer science review, which I think engineers should do periodically from time to time, and I've purchased this book, Algorithms, 4th edition. I've just been working through some of the exercises, and I thought I'd make a video on the first exercise in the book, which is an insertion sort. It has a very long history, and I thought I would see if I can get it working on the 8080 computer and demonstrate it in this video. The insertion sort algorithm is very old. It was first described in a computing context as late as the 1950s. And what you see on the screen right now is pseudocode for an insertion sort. What you do is you start a pointer i, the second element of your array, and then you advance that pointer i to the nth element of the array. And inside your loop for your pointer i, you're going to first take a memory variable key and you're going to store the element pointed to by i. Then you're going to bring up a pointer j, and you're going to point it at 1 minus i. So if you start off with 2, i equals 2, then j is going to equal 1. And then you begin a loop that while j is greater than 0, and the element pointed to by j is greater than key, then you're going to execute steps 5 and 6. And I'm going to show you this algorithm in action on the screen. So I started off with a six element array. When you see those numbers five, two, four, six, one, three, those are the values of my array. I'm going to walk through each step of the pseudocode. So we start off with at step one, i equals two. So we're pointing to our second element in our array. And we're going to move that into a variable called key. So whatever the value of the element number two is, we're going to store that in key. And in this case, my second element in my array is at number two, and I'm going to put that in key. Then I'm going to have j one, one below i. So it's going to be whatever the value of i is, minus one. So that's a one. Then I'm going to start my loop, and I'm going to ask, is j greater than zero? And in this case, Yes, it is. And is the value pointed to by j, the, the element value pointed to by j, is that greater than key? And in this case, it is true. So both of those statements are true, and that makes the whole loop true. So what's going to happen inside of that loop is I'm going to copy the element pointed by j, pointed to by j, into the element position pointed to by i. So I'm just going to move that 5 over. And then I'm going to decrement j. Well, what's going to happen is when we run through this loop again, it's going to be false because j is no longer greater than 0. So the last step, step 7, in the pseudocode is, is I'm going to move the key value into 1 plus j, which happens to be the first element of the array. Then I increment i. It's now pointing at the third element of the array. And I put that into our key value. So the number four ends up in the key value. Then I put j just below i, which is a two in this case. I enter my loop again. I'm going to test, is j greater than zero? Well, that's true. And is the element pointed to by j greater than key? And in this case, it is true. So both j is greater than zero and what I'm pointing to, which is a five, is greater than the key value, which is a four. I'm going to move the element pointed to by j into the element pointed to by i. So I'm taking that 5 and moving it up. And then I'm going to decrement j. In my loop, I'm going to be testing is j greater than 0? And is the element pointed to by j greater than key? Well, in this case, that statement is false because a 2 is obviously not greater than a 4. So I'm going to take the key value for and I'm going to put it in j plus 1 and increment i. In this case, the loop has failed because although j is greater than 0, the value pointed to by j is not greater than the key value. So we're just going to put the key value back where it was, which is the fourth element of the array. And then the same thing. We take the element pointed to by i, put it in key, 
then place J just below I, and then test again. In this case, it's going to be true because J is greater than zero, but the element pointed to by J is greater than the key value. Now watch what happens. This is where part of the magic of this um, algorithm occurs. We move the element pointed to by J into the uh, uh, element pointed to by I, and then we decrement J. And we're going to do the same comparison. That's going to move the element pointed to by J into the element pointed to J plus one, and then so on through this loop. And then we get to the end, I is going to be incremented and we're going to be looking at the fifth element in the array, seeing that, well, J failed because J is now below zero and our key value then gets moved into the first element of the array, J plus one. Now we're going to increment I, put that in key, move J, watch what happens. So this process that you're seeing is, is very interesting behavior, but it's also the reason why the insertion sort algorithm is not very efficient for large arrays. So if you had an array of 10,000 values, having to start from the very top of the array and move a value stepwise through that entire 10,000 elements till you get to the end or to an element that's lower than the value you're moving can take quite a bit of time. This algorithm works great for small arrays, but for larger arrays, it does tend to become inefficient. And as you can see at the end, we have a sorted array now. Let's see what it looks like in actual code. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Aztec C compiler by Manx Software Systems. It was published in the 80s, and it runs on my 8080 computer. And I also have the VI editor that I describe on my website as well to look at this file. So I've created a file called sort.c. What I've done is I've taken the pseudocode and translated that into a C program. First line is an include statement. I want to include the function prototypes for the print function I'm going to be using that's part of the C standard library in this compiler. I create an array of 10 elements, giving them these values, 9, 3, 12, 5, 1, reasonably unsorted. And then I define a function prototype for a print array function that I create that allows me to print the contents of the array. And then this is the main function. This is where the actual code resides for the sort routine. I define an integer i and j and key, which you saw in the pseudocode and in the presentation file earlier on how the pseudocode works. I'm going to call print array, which is going to print the contents of the unsorted array. And then I've got a header message here. It just says ascending sort. And then this is the actual C code that does the sort, where I have I starts off with as one. My C array has an array offset of zero, whereas the pseudocode used an array offset of one. So that's why this code is slightly different from what you saw earlier. And then I'm going to step through the process of sorting the array and then print it again in the sorted form. And this is just the print array function. Start off with an integer i a defined that's visible only in this function. Print a header and then sequentially print the contents of the array values 0 through 8. And then I'll print value 9 here with a, uh, a carriage return at the end. So let's see how this works. First, I'm going to compile it. So the C code that I showed you earlier has now been converted into 8080 assembly, assembly language, and now we're going to assemble that into machine code.
Now I have an object code file. I need to link in the C library functions that I've used for my program. And I'm going to run the linker. There's my sort object file. And then I'm going to add the C lib file. And this will create for me an executable. All right, now that that's finished, we've got sort, which is our um, source code. So we'll have a sort.c file right here. And then I've got a sort.o file, which is the output from the assembler. And then we've got sort.com, which is the application file. So let's run that and see how it works. I'm going to first clear the screen and then run sort. Didn't take very long. So here's our unsorted array elements. And then just below that is the sorted array elements. Now suppose we wanted to reverse the sort order. So right now this is in ascending order. What if we want to do it in descending? So what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this. And I'm going to call it usort. So make a copy of sort.c and call it usort.c. The pip utility does the copying. So I'm going to vi usort.c. And as it turns out, to have a reverse order sort, All I really need to do is change this one sign. Now let's compile this, assemble it, link it, and see how it works. Let's compile it. Assemble it. And link it. Clear the screen and run it. There you go. Now you can see that we have the array now sorted in descending order. Very nice.